What's up, seventh grade? Mr. Agnos here. This video is for home, homework assignment 8-1K and 8-1G. So in this topic, we're going to start solving equations. And what an equation is, is a mathematical sentence. So I'm just going to rewrite this one right here. And, and again, this assignment is actually called solving simple equations. So these are these, these, are, these equations are as simple as, as it gets. Um, but here it is. M, so this one says m plus 15 is equal to 24. This is a math, mathematical sentence. And when we say solve it, it means we're going to figure out what number m must be to make this true. Right? There's only one number in the entire universe of numbers that's going to make this um, mathematical sentence true. Every other number... Um, we would get um, something that doesn't make any sense. So to solve equations, we use something called inverse operations. And inverse operations just means to do the opposite. So I'm going to write inverse operations. That's an O. Inverse operations. So if, we're, if we are adding, we're going to subtract. If we're subtracting, we're going to add. If we're multiplying, we're going to divide. And if we're dividing, we're going to multiply. In other words, we're going to undo whatever is being done to our variable. We're going to do the opposite. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this equation right here. It says m plus 15 is equal to 24. Well, since we're adding 15 to whatever number this is to equal 24, then we want to undo this by subtracting 15. Right? It's like it gets rid of it. It's like tying a knot and then untying the knot. Um, adding 15 is tying the knot. Well, we're going to subtract 15. And what allows us to do this is called the subtraction property of equality. And there's a, there's a property of equality for all of these. And it, what the subtraction property of equality says that, hey, if, if I have a scale, right, and I take off 15 from both sides of my scale, Right? That's, that's the equality part. I have to do it to both sides. It's still going to be true. right? It's still going to be equal. Well, m plus 15, but I subtracted 15, so I'm left with just m. We say that these cancel. right? If I add 15, but then I subtract 15. If I give you $15, but then I take that $15 back, I've given you nothing. They cancel. Equals, right? we bring down our equal sign. Well, 24 minus 15 is equal to 9. So the only number in the entire universe that's going to make this mathematical sentence true is 9. And we can actually see that if we plug 9 back into the original equation. So instead of m, I'm going to say 9 plus 15 is equal to 24. Right? 9 plus 15 is 24 equals 24. And we get a perfectly balanced, that's not a y, that's a 4 we get a perfectly balanced equation. It worked. Any number other than 9, and it's not going to be perfectly balanced. right? For example, if I, if I plugged in a 10 here, I would get 25 equals 24. That's not true. Right? All right, so we're going to use inverse operations to solve simple equations. right? And this is exactly how you should be showing your work and, and, and writing out your work. All right, let's try, let's try one where we're subtracting. So we have four operations, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So I'm going to do one of each. So I'm just going to make up some problems here. Let's say that h um, minus 17 is equal to 20. Well, what this equation says is that there's some number h, and that when I take away 17 from that number, it's equal to 20. So if I want to figure out what this number is, I have to add the 17 back. I have to do the opposite. So since I'm subtracting, I'm going to add to undo it. So I'm going to add 17 to the left hand side. I'm going to add 17 to the right hand side. Uh, minus 17 plus 17. Those cancel, right? If I, if I owe you $17, but then I pay you $17, I now owe you nothing. And so I'm left with just the H on the left hand side. And on the right hand side of my equation, 20 plus 17 is 37. So h, I'm um, sorry, 37 is the only number that we can plug in for h and make this equation true. And again, we can check that. I can say 37 
minus 17 is equal to 20, right? And 37 minus 17 is 20 equals 20. And again, this is what it looks like when you have a perfectly balanced equation. It worked. If I plug in any other number besides 37, I'm going to get, you know, 19 equals 20 or you know, uh, 15 equals 20. I would get something weird that doesn't make sense. All right, 37 is the only number where I will get what we call a true statement um, over here um, on the right. All right, let's look at multiplication and division. And I am going to throw in a little wrinkle here, I think. I'm going to say, okay, negative 3 times x is equal to 12. All right, I, I threw in that negative. It's fine. We just got to remember how we multiply and divide uh, negative and positive numbers. All right, so the inverse operation of multiplying is dividing. So since I'm multiplying x by negative 3, then if I want to untie that knot, if I want to undo that, I have to divide by negative 3. And whatever I do to one side, I always have to do to the other. So I'm going to divide the left-hand side. And the way we show that is with a fraction bar. Right? This means The fraction bar means divide by negative 3. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to divide by negative 3. All right, on the left, if I multiply and divide by the same number, if I take 10 and I multiply it by 5, I get 50. And then if I divide by 5, I'm right back to 10, right? They cancel each other out. So same thing here. If I multiply by negative 3 and then divide by negative 3, they cancel each other out. It's like I took a step to the left, but then I immediately took a step back to the right. I'm right where I started. Right? I didn't go anywhere. So these cancel each other out. I'm left with just x. A positive number divided by a negative number is negative. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So in this case, the only number that will make this statement true is negative 4. And again, we can check that, right? What is negative 3 times negative 4, right? Does that equal 12? Well, a negative times a negative is positive, and 3 times 4 is 12. So once again, we do get a true statement. All right, the last type um, you'll see is a division, right? So it's kind of the opposite of this, is what if we're dividing? Well, then we have to multiply. So let's see, I'm just going to make something up here. We got b divided by, I'm going to use a negative again, uh, b divided by negative 3 is equal to, I don't know, 11. Okay, this, this means on the left-hand side here, b divided by negative 3. So the inverse, the opposite of dividing by negative 3, the way that I untie this knot is by multiplying times negative 3. And whatever I do to one side of my equation, I have to do to the other. So on the left-hand side, we're going to multiply by negative 3. Uh, we're going to multiply b by negative 3. And so we make sure to write the negative 3 next to the b, right? Because we're first we divided it, but now we're going to multiply it. And then on the right-hand side, I'm multiplying by negative 3. Whatever you do to one side of your equation, you have to do to the other. There should be a symmetry with your work, right? It should be, it should be balanced like this. All right, so just like I said in the previous one, if we multiply and divide by the same number, it's like taking a step to the left, and then I immediately take a step back to the right, I just, I just end up right where I started. So if I divide by negative 3, but then I multiply by negative 3, I'm just right back to where I started, which is with b. So we, we say that these cancel, and I get b is equal to, well, a positive times a negative is negative, and 11 times 3 is 33. So negative 33 is the only number in the universe that would make this equation true. So I could say negative 33 divided by negative 3 equals 11, right? A negative divided by a negative is positive, and 33 divided by 3 is 11. So I end up with 11 equals 11. Good to go. All right. <clears throat> so... 
hopefully these problems aren't too bad. Um, equations are used to model things. I'm a little fuzzy in the video here. I apologize. Um, they're used to model things in the real world, how things are growing, uh, rockets shooting into space, baseballs, you know, when you hit a home run, can we write an equation that models that? And they get very complicated and very sophisticated. Um, this is like, this is like square step one. This is like, if we're talking Legos, this is like a, uh, you know, a, 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 a two by one brick. It's like the most simple brick you can think of, right? And there's all kinds of super complicated Lego pieces and you can make amazing things. But first you have to learn how to use the simple stuff, right? So that's what we're doing. All right. Um, hopefully this video helps you get started and make sure to ask lots of questions in class. See you guys soon.